CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Redevelopment Board to order. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the board. Welcome this evening. Um, could the other members of the board please introduce yourselves? Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shayna Corman Houston. Kid Lau. And we are also pleased to welcome the uh, director of uh, the Department of Planning and Community Development, uh, Claire Ricker, and the owl who is apparently <laughs> moving at us to welcome us to the meeting this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. All right. Uh, so without further ado, let us uh, get started with our first agenda item this evening, which is a review of the meeting minutes from September 9th. 2024, uh, and I'll uh, see if there are any additions or corrections from the members of the board, starting with Steve. Yes, uh, one uh, one correction. Okay. So, uh, page five, the third bullet point, uh, it currently reads that the applicant create bicycle parking that does not require the bicycles to be lifted for storage. I'd like to suggest changing the word create to consider so that it reads that the applicant consider bicycle parking that does not require that bicycles be lifted for storage. Um, I, when I said this, I was you know, doing it in an advisory capacity because the bicycle parking guidelines don't apply to duplexes. Um, so I don't think it, we can require that of them, but we could ask. <laughs> Great, thank you, Steve. Uh, any objections to that provision? G uh, G I, I think what we actually, the motion said create, so if the motion said create and we would have to go back and look, you can't change it to something else retro, you know, mm -hmm. going back. So um, I, I would hesitate to agree to that without looking at the actual um, video and seeing what they said. I don't believe that the motion So we had four conditions, correct? This is for the uh, five seven Belknap. Yep. Belknap. Belknap. I remember. And I apologize. I, I can't pull that up in front of me. So I remember all these conditions, but I don't. Uh, I don't remember. I, I, I definitely said consider. It was yeah, definitely a suggestion and not a requirement. I don't know if this changed in the motion. Though. Um, okay, so again, if Steve recalls that as consider, I have not reviewed the, um, and I don't believe that we have signed the, um, the final uh, yeah. document either. So um, I think that I would be fine with changing that to consider, and we will ensure that the um, final wording is in alignment. Okay. Um, any others, Steve? No. Jean? I have no changes. Sheena? None. Uh, no. None? Okay. Uh, so with that, is there a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes from September 9th, 2024 as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Sheena? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I have a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved as amended. Let's move to our uh, second agenda item, which is a public hearing for docket number 3810, 149 Pleasant Street. Um, and I will turn it over to Director uh, Ricker regarding the uh, request for continuance. Sure, thank you very much. So um, we received a phone call from the architect, uh, Martha Penzenek, from 140, for, regarding 149 Pleasant Street. She asked that um, the uh, hearing be continued to November 4th so that she could come back with um, um, all the, uh, with any documents and um, explanation the board has requested at the previous meeting. Great. Are there any uh, concerns or questions about the proposed continuance from the board? Nope. Uh, seeing none, is there a motion to continue the hearing for docket number 3810-149 Pleasant Street to November 4th, 2024? Yes. There's a motion to. Second. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. I have a yes as well. May I say something related to the property, too? Please. 
if if uh, Director Ricker is going to mention this to the applicant, the property is a mess, and what's especially bad is that there's vegetation on the property that's slopping over onto the sidewalk in various places, making it difficult to walk along the sidewalk, which also I think might violate the town bylaw on that. So if you mention that we approved continuing the hearing, can you ask him to please do something about that? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gene, for bringing that to um, the planning, the Department of Planning and Community Development's attention. Um, agenda, anything else on uh, Docket 3810? All right, let's move to agenda item number three, which is a public hearing on Docket number 3798, 821 Mass Ave. And my understanding is that uh, there was also a request for continuance of this hearing. So, Director Ricardo. Yes, um, this hearing is uh, required to be continued. This is um, the hearing that was open for 821 um, Mass Ave, the Atwood House. Um, we needed to co-open the um, 2009 permit um, for the CDS at the same time as the Atwood House permit was opened on the same property. So we need to continue the original, or not the original, excuse me, the Outwood House hearing to October 21st at such a time as the 2009 permit is also open. Great, thank you for the clarification. Uh, any uh, questions or discussion on the uh, continuance of the hearing? Steve? No. Jean? No. Shana? No. Ken? No. All right, is there a motion to continue the uh, public hearing for docket number 3798 Mass Ave to October 21st, 2024? So motion. Second. Take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. Yes, as well. That hearing will be continued. Uh, so, moving right along, we will now move to agenda item number four, which is the hearing, public hearing for docket number 3819 to Reservoir Road. Do we have the applicants with us this evening? Great, thank you. Um, so, what we will do this evening is I will turn it over to Director Wicker to introduce the uh, agenda item for this evening. Um, we'll then turn it over to you and um, you can take up to, to 10 minutes to uh, provide any context that you'd like to the board, if you'd like to call any attention to any of the materials you've submitted, that would be great as well. The board will then um, I'll, uh, give the board an opportunity to ask you any clarifying questions. Um, we'll open it, this up for public comment for anyone who'd like to provide comment. We'll close that and the board will um, have a discussion and decide whether or not they'll be able to vote to um, approve or take any other action this evening. Great, uh, so Director Ricker, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you very much. So um, this is an application by David and um, Lenia Bergen at 2 Reservoir Road in Arlington. The applicant proposes to renovate the existing uh, non-conforming single family residence located at 2 Reservoir Road in the R1 district by constructing an addition to the first floor and adding a dormer to the second floor. The opening of the stock to allow the board to review and approve the project under section 3.3 special permits and section 3.4.2b environmental design review. This application is before the redevelopment board due to the project's location abutting the Minuteman bikeway. I have one um, amendment to this memo um, that I didn't, uh, wasn't able to make the change before the meeting tonight. We did receive a lead for single family homes checklist um, for this project. I believe the memo says that um, the board may recommend um, submittal of that document, but this, um, the office did receive um, the lead checklist. Great, thank you very much. Um, and I believe that there may have also been a clarification from Inspector uh, Champa. There was also a clarification from Inspector Champa. I believe there was a question about whether the conservation area um, that was defined by the Conservation Commission when they were um, issuing their conditions for this project is deemed to be usable open space, not, not usable open space. And so um, in the opinion of the Building Commissioner and also in my opinion, um, they have met the conditions for um, usable open space within this project. Great, thank you very much for the clarification. Um, so at this time, I'd, I'd love to uh, turn it over to, to you for um, any introduction that you would like to uh, make to the board. Okay. Um, my husband and I are here along with our architect, and um, 
and I, I'm so sorry. If I could just ask you to in, introduce your, oh. yourself for whomever is going to be speaking this evening. Just okay. your first, last name, and address, please. Anita Bergeron, to Reservoir Road. Thank you. Um, as Claire said, the property is um, on the, uh, because it's adjacent to the bike way, um, had to go through the conservation board approval, and we have received that approval. Um, the existing house is a one and a half story with two bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs back. And the project is consists of a complete restoration to the existing structure with an addition of a second floor rear dormer to create an upstairs bathroom for aging the place and a first floor rear addition to expand the living space. Um, the rear addition replaces an, a rear entry porch and the sidewalk, and we're on the project we're aiming to preserve the existing architectural features of the house's bungalow style, keeping the character of the front porch. And to be less obtrusive, uh, the first floor addition has been set back on the sides um, one foot from the existing dimensions of the house. Um, to minimize the climate impact of the addition, we have reduced the size of the existing driveway so that the pro at the project's completion, the total change to the lot's hardscape is less than 316 square feet. We could have opted for a longer driveway and permeable pavement, but felt that in the long run, it was better to have more lawn and earth to permanently absorb runoff. In addition, we've added additional drainage on the property, uh, a two-foot previous gravel drip line around two sides of the existing garage, and a two-foot previous gravel drip line at the rear edge of the addition. Great. So, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the um, thorough packaging. Um, so at this point, I will turn it over to Steve to start with uh, any questions you might have for the applicant. Um, so there, <clears throat> I, one of the things I was looking at in reviewing this was the size, of the footprint of the addition. So it's about 426 square feet. Yes. And yes. you're also taking away some of the existing driveway. So the net change to uh, right. the impervious would be, I think you said 319. Like 316. 360. 15. Okay, so less than, but less than 350. 350 is right, our right. stormwater bylaw right, requirements. Right. Okay. Yeah, and, and part of the reason is there's an existing rear porch, a 7 by 10 mm -hmm. rear porch that that's going away and the addition goes in you know, over top of it. There's also a rear entry sidewalk, the, the width of the property, so that would, that's going away. So that's how it Yeah, I was, um, I visited the parcel this weekend and I hadn't real, I did not realize No Name Brook went up that far, but uh, it's, apparently it does. A, well, there's a it's, it's an option, <laughs> depending on the way people are thinking, but we did have an engineer check it out, so he located the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sure, sure. I'm sorry, if you could just introduce oh, yourself. I'm sorry. I'm the architect, David Mullen. Thank you very much. Well, Appreciate it for the well, record. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. I have no further questions, Madam Chair. Great. Thank you. Gene. Yeah, thank you. And. These are odd things when we end up the ARB having to do something like this just because it happens to abut the Minutemen bikeway. I think when people put this in the zoning bylaw years ago, long before any of us were involved in this, the idea was if there were things facing the bikeway, they wanted to have somebody review how they're going to look. Unfortunately, you've got caught in that net because whomever wrote the zoning bylaw, in my opinion at least, wrote it a little bit too broadly, yeah. you know? So, but we're, we, we have to do what we have right, to do right, because right. that's, that's um, the requirement. And one of the things that we're asked to do is to look at the facade because that's actually the piece that we get connected to. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out what the new facade was going to look like from um, any of the materials presented. I saw all of these nice diagrams about the additions and 
things like that. Yeah. So if you could explain yeah. sure. a little bit what the facade if is going to look like. If anyone is even confused after that, I have, I have the full size drawings with me. With pictures or you know something no. more well, nice? Well, with, with elevations so, of the so facades. Can, can somebody so explain is, colors and materials and things like that, please? I can, yes. Uh, I, we, I haven't gone that far to actually describe it. Uh, so mm -hmm. the clients and I have not picked the colors yet. Uh, the materials are shingles. Wooden? Excuse me? Wooden shingles? Yes, they're wooden shingles. And the shingles go around all the corners. There's no vertical voids. So it's, it's, in, keeping with, it's in keeping with the original house. Uh, as a uh, bungalow, so I, I'm continuing that. The likelihood, the likelihood, although we haven't finalized it, the color is probably going to be some sort of gray or gray green. So, which uh, I'm not sure. You know, it's going to be the roof will be shingled with regular asphalt shingles. Asphalt shingles, and. Uh, are you looking for the materials deeper than the shingles as well? I mean, uh, that's all described there, meaning the insulation and, no, and then no. the No, okay. no. Okay. No, just the, the exterior, what we can see. And how will the view from the bike path be different when it's completed as compared to now? It's going to have an, ex it's going to have an exterior addition. This meant, should I? Can I stand up? You, you can. Right. If there are, if there, and if you would like us to flip to a different page so that you yeah, can. It's okay. It's okay. So. This one, this is, this is looking along North Street. So this is, it's a corner lot. Right. Okay. Right. So this is North Street here, and Reservoir right. Road is here. Right. I'm, I'm in the way. So here's the original house, including this, and this. This is the addition off the original house. And this is the dormer, adding the dormer up here. The dormer is only added to create a bathroom up above. And it actually doesn't, it doesn't uh, create too much space, because the space is dead there now. And I've sort of lined it up by raising it. So basically, yeah, let's, let's get the rear. Yep. Yeah. Is this one? No. That's the rear. Yeah. This is the rear. Yeah. So here's that long, uh, you know, this looks like a steeper roof, but it, it's actually the one that's quite shallow. So that's what one would see from the bike trail. Oh, of course, a, they'd have to look through the trees. Bush, you know, right, bushes right. And trees. At least, at, least, the winter, at least during the summer, you can't see They'd it. They'd have to slow their bike down and, and, and right. gaze for a while through the trees if there's a big maple tree. Yeah, right. yeah there's right. a big maple tree. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I think that, okay. that is helpful for me, at least. Okay. The, the only other okay. thing... Um, the, likely, is, the likelihood is, uh -huh. you know, as a beginning, I know we've talked briefly about it. The window frames are likely to be black. And this is uh, probably a grayish green. And then there's uh, the trim is going to probably be an off-white headed to a green. OK, thank you. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I'll mention, and I know this is a little difficult for someone to yep. dip in the zoning bylaw for the first time, <laughs> that there are a whole lot of errors in your application where it comes to um, what the requirements are of the zoning bylaw. But I don't think they matter <laughs> for, for this, so we don't have to get into them. But I think it's just important to point out for the record that there are a lot of errors in the application that are not really relevant. Uh, everything from the required minimum lot size to the required frontage and some, some other things like that, but you don't have to really worry um, about that, I think, unless one of my colleagues raises it for Is purposes it the of this. Is the calculation she talked about? Um, uh, yes, it's the, it's the table. This it table. Is the, it is the calculation. Yeah, this for example, you've indicated that the 
required by zoning, this is just one example, is 5,000 square feet, but the R1 district, it's 6,000 square feet. You're a prior non-conforming use, so you don't have to I worry understand. about that, but I just wanted to point that out. That, that's all I have. It would, to, to Jean's point, it would not preclude us from moving right. forward because it, it's, it just has to do with the existing non conformity. I understand. Right. I understand. Right. And I put, I put what the actual lot size right. was, right. which yeah. is what I got the right. Yeah, and, right, right. Okay. There, are, there are some lots on the two streets yeah. that are on days um, yeah. that are 6,000 feet at both ends of the street. And well, that, the, but, the bylaw allows you, because you're a prior non-conforming use, yes. to continue yes. right. to do what you're doing. Yes. Um, but, I, and I, as I mentioned, it's very difficult to get this right <laughs> when you don't know the zoning bylaw. Yeah, and my next door neighbor, you know, he's got the same problem. <laughs> I know the process. I know the process. I know the process. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you, Jean. Shana, any questions or comments? Uh, just one. Uh, it it appears that there's currently access, at least informal access, to the bike trail from uh, your parcel or immediately adjacent to your parcel. Is that correct? Yes. Um, and is that going to um, continue in yes. its current state? Yes. It, it's 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 known by the public. It, it, they they the public actually walks over a piece of the land. That's yeah. correct. Stay and Google knows about it. Yes. <laughs> Google yes. knows everything. Google does know everything. So uh, my colleagues have it, have raised um, my other questions already. Great. Thank you, Shana. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a very nice project. I like it a lot. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make a few small comments. You said that this was uh, shakes or shingles. It's shingles. They, they are shingles. Mm -hmm. You show it as clapboard right now in all your drawings. Um, well, it, for simplicity, it's described as shingles. So, in other words, if I was to do shingles, then I'd have to add a, a bunch of vertical lines. Uh, but it, it, on the drawing, it looks like clapboards because it looks more vertical, ver more horizontal than vertical. But they are, in fact, shingles. And the specification on the drawing describes exactly the shingles. I realize, I realize it's more drawing, but what I usually do then is, back in the days when I used to draw by hand. They are hand-drawn uh, drawings. Yes, I know that. Yeah. Uh, I would just draw a corner of it, expressing what the details Well, that's like. true. I, I, and, then, I would, and then just leave the rest as... as uh, I would agree with that. And that but that's, that's okay. I would, I'm not, that's not going to affect my decision. Yeah, I sure. just, the way you show it is sort of okay. misleading. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay. okay. sure. Um, The other thing um, I just want to get an understanding is this is just a simple addition of back, which is basically a kitchen and eating area, right. and then you're lifting the back side up so you can get a, a, a bathroom and a closet in there up in the, uh, to do the yes. bed, uh, bedroom So yes. very, it's very steep, and then it's only going to open a certain uh, part of the okay. uh, yeah. All right. I didn't get a chance to look at your your energy, uh, okay. But uh, we're going by the stretch code now, right. and yes, it's, it's understand. very uh, tough to get that uh, get the uh, insulation values. Okay, I, I noticed right. you're strapping the walls with two by uh, two by six. Okay, right. That doesn't necessarily get it. And right. then we're we're going we're we're going to use zip wall off and all tape joints. As well, I, 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 I read this thing. I guess. Oh, okay. I'm, all right. I'm okay. just saying all right. it's really difficult because now you get thermal block bridging with the wood yes. instead of something that's uh, just. I'm just saying it's going to be difficult to obtain. Just be careful how you go about doing that, okay? Because I, I run into issues like this where you deny sure. it just by fattening out the wall doesn't necessarily get you there, okay? So we may have to add another exterior sheathing. That has some insulation and then the hardwood. Some, 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 some rigid insulation on the outside before you put the uh, put the, the siding on. Okay. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the decision here. I'm just saying. Understood. 
it, it, um, stretch code is, is much harder to obtain now. It's not that easy. Well, I admit that I, I don't. I actually don't know the stretch code. I know the rest. But. Okay. And then the windows, just be careful. You need the, uh, the low E film. Otherwise, you're not going to get it. Yes, I have low E film on okay. it. Yes. And then. I'm going to tell me details. This is nothing to the decision to get, okay? No, yeah. No, no, You're no. calling half inch uh, sheathing on the roof, okay? That does not mean code. You have to go 5 eighths. It's the brown uh, um, board, okay? It's not the green. The green is only good for the walls for share. So it's zip wall, but it's 5 eighths, right? Correct, and it's brown, not green. You know, I've seen the brown. That's only used for roofs. And I have That's to admit, I didn't know that. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ken. And um, I will just state that Ken gave you some advice on his personal experience, but you will need to review everything with the building inspector. That I is not part of the redevelopment or decision or. Sure. Uh, I still have to go through right. that. Right, absolutely. And he'll have other requirements. Okay. Good point. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I don't have any separate comments. <coughs> Other than I you know, I think it's a very um, sympathetic addition to the architecture of the existing building, and I appreciate um, yep. you all bringing this in front of us. So, um, any other questions? Otherwise, at this time, what I will do is open um, this hearing up for public comment. So, if anyone has joined us this evening who would um, like to speak regarding uh, this hearing, uh, please raise your hand. Please, my name is Ethan Freeze. I'm the neighbor has that view, oh no, the other, the other side. And, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, if you could just, um, for the record, state your, uh, oh. your, you just stated your name, but if you could also state your address, that would oh, be great. Oh, 22 thank North you. Street. Great, thank you. Um, across the street, and I've watched this progress for months and months, and we are very excited. Everyone is very, very supportive on the street. Great. Because we do have several bungalows that disappeared in place of triple decker ugly things. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate the uh, support of the neighborhood and for you also um, sharing with your neighbors your uh, your plans for renovation. Um, so at this time, I'll turn it back to the I'll close public comment if there are no other comments this evening. And I will uh, turn it back to the board for any final discussion, starting with Steve. Nothing here. Jean? Nothing more. Shana? Nothing. Ken? No. Great. Um, so at this time, I would ask if there is a motion to approve. Oh, actually, so, I do yes. have. It. So with regard to the um, conditions suggested yes. in the memo, um, we might want to reconsider a few of them, I think. Because they're more geared, yes. So and I apologize, <clears throat> I don't have that in front of me because I can't access the, um, so Steve, if you would like to make a motion for the board, um, and suggest those that you would want to consider removing. Mm -hmm. I think that would be okay. helpful. So I would make a motion that of the conditions suggested in the uh, staff memo for, uh, for docket 3819, that in item condition six, we strike the sentence, the applicant shall provide a statement from the town engineer that all proposed utility service has adequate capacity to deserve the development yep. uh, because the use is not changing. Um, that we strike item number eight, which requires all uh, underground utilities. Yep. And that we strike item number 10, uh, the condition that building signage shall be filed and reviewed by the Department of Planning and Community Development and Inspectional Services. Great, thank you. Are there other conditions that um, board members would like to propose removing? Jean? Well, as long as we're going there, the first sentence in number five, um, they're going to be subject to whatever the town's trash removal is, so we really don't need yep. um, that sentence. And then, um, I'm sorry, I didn't have this in front of me, so give me a second here to pull this up. But there, there's a there's a general condition we should be adding to um, all of these that's not here, and I suggested it to the two that we saw a few weeks ago. Let me see if I can find it to add it. Sorry for the delay. No worries. Okay. 
and, and this is right from the zoning bylaw, but that it's not in the um, in the in the special permit general um, conditions is inappropriate. So this is in 3.1. I think it should say um, this special permit in environmental design review is conditioned upon compliance with the conditions set forth in this permit and the state building code and where applicable the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board regulations. That's taken from 3.1D. So I would suggest that that be added. Okay. Are there any other uh, additions or deletions proposed from the uh, special conditions memo from the Department of Planning and Community Development? Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve docket three eight, excuse me? Doctor three, docket 3819 for Two Reservoir Road with the removal of uh, suggested special conditions 6, 8, 10, the first sentence of 5, and the addition of the uh, wording for special condition consistent with section 3.1D from the zoning bylaw. Um, Madam Chair, one small change to that. Yes. Um, not striking all of six, but only the first sentence. Thank you. Is there a motion with the uh, correction provided by Steve? So moved. Second. Take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Congratulations. Your proposal is approved. I look forward to seeing the addition. You'll get something in writing. Okay. You have to wait till you get something right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I ask for clarification on number six? Uh, yeah, the first sentence is stricken, but mm -hmm. you have to provide evidence of a final plan for drainage. Yeah. So the um, in in the in the case of your where you're adding less than 350 square feet, yeah. uh, the town engineer may say that you don't need a plan, and that's all you need you need okay. to do. Okay. You do need to check with them on that. Okay. And that should be since you've been working with the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. that, that should be okay. you know, a, a pretty, they would have, pretty they should have process. Thought it as well. okay. And if you do have any questions, um, I know that Claire and the uh, uh, team of the Department of Community uh, Planning and Community Development yeah. will simply answer those as we. Uh, provide the, the final documentation to you from the hearing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, that closes public hearing for Docket 3819 for Two Reservoir Road. We'll now move to uh, agenda item number five. Actually, Claire, since this was advertised for 830, what I might do is take some of these items sure. out of order um, in case we have anyone joining us. Um, this evening um, for, for that hearing. I'm going to give folks a little bit extra time. Um, so if I could propose that we move to the agenda item number six, with the, which is a debrief of the joint meeting with the select board. And I'll turn that over to you for um, anything that you would like to uh, try to introduce that. All right, great. So um, regarding uh, the meeting on the 16th, the joint meeting with the select board, um, we thought we would put uh, an item on the agenda tonight to discuss uh, any remaining items or outcomes from the joint meeting. Um, I think generally we agreed that the meeting went quite well, um, especially with the select board was fruitful, but just uh, wondering if the board had any sort of final thoughts or um, comments on uh, that meeting and the topics discussed. Uh, thank you, Claire. I'll uh, start with uh, you, Ken. Any any thoughts or uh, follow-up items? Well, a lot of good topics were brought up. Uh, how are we going to, how do we follow up on uh, what plans have been pursued and, and or, or what actions are happening? I, 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 I've gone through these um, joint meetings before and we bring up 
suggestions and everybody's happy rah rah and then us and another year goes by and we're still talking and saying stuff. Can I make a suggestion? Um, what I think might, I know that we just received the meeting minutes from that for review. If I could make a suggestion that at either our next meeting or the meeting following that, depending on how stacked our agendas have become, when we review the meeting minutes, we also kind of go through those because there were, uh, you know, in the agenda, I think there were seven topic areas, and it would be good just to go through each one and make sure that we're aligned on what the follow up is for each one. I know that. Um, the town manager took some as, as a takeaway, um, the development board took some items as a, as a takeaway, and the select board did as well. But I think without having the meeting minutes in front of us, it hampers us a little bit tonight from having a um, probably as productive a conversation as we could about what the next steps are. I think that's a very good idea. And so I, all I can say is I thought it was very fruitful and it was, it was good. Okay. And I'll leave it at that and we'll continue on. Okay, sounds good. Shana? Um, <clears throat> uh, I think similarly, I'm looking forward to seeing the meeting minutes or reviewing the meeting minutes so that we can have a uh, next steps conversation. In particular, I think uh, overnight parking was, was a topic of interest to me. and. Um, interested to see if that can, uh, to the extent to which that can be expanded. I was surprised to hear the level of uh, usage or non-usage of the overnight uh, permits and was wondering why that was and, and uh, if there was a way that we could incur, uh, what we could do, uh, what we could do with applicants here um, that, that might facilitate uses of usage of those permits um, in a way that was beneficial to, to project development. Understanding that it's still a pilot, which makes it a little challenging. Great. Thank you, Shana. Gene? Yeah, I agree with everything that Kim and Rachel and Shana just said. And, um, I think it would be important for us to have that conversation and see if there are things that you want to do or want to suggest that the select board do. Great. Thank you. Uh, Steve. So um, my first reaction, I was very, I was really happy to see how receptive the select board seemed to um, the, you know, the uh, basically updating the business district zoning in the Heights. Mm -hmm. um, and that was sort of my, my, my first takeaway. And my second takeaway was, um, you know, the, I, I know members of the select board have historically joked that they spend um, more time than they expect talking about parking, um, including with us. And we spend a lot of time talking about parking too, but I, thought, I felt it was a, a good start to that conversation. Great. Thank you, Steve. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, I think at this point we will um, close agenda item number six and reopen that once we uh, have the meeting minutes at our next meeting from, from this meeting. Um, again, I'd like to give it a little bit more time to get closer to the 8.30 advertised public hearing time. So uh, let's go ahead and move to agenda item number eight, which is uh, new business. Or we'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. So um, the uh, RFP for the master plan consultant has closed. It closed on the 23rd. We received six responses, um, which was about double what I expected to receive. Great. Yeah, we received responses from MAPC, Weston and Samson, uh, Jen Goldson planning, I think, Barrett, Stantec, and um, Innes uh, Associates. So um, we'll have a meeting on uh, Thursday. Uh, it'll be our next master our AMP UP committee uh, meeting where we'll uh, just you know, go over some of these um, responses. Um, because we received so many, um, I think originally I had thought that the, uh, whole, the entire AMP UP committee would be involved um, in sort of the, the uh, evaluation and interviewing of these firms. But 
um, given the number that we have, I think we're going to establish a selection committee with um, the two um, ARB representatives that are on the board, three uh, potential, uh, three uh, other um, uh, me, committee members, and then uh, myself and another staff member um, would, would be uh, reviewing the responses. So a, a pretty robust response. Um, I think it's great. And um, you know, we'll continue to, to uh, we'll, we'll do the evaluation on those and report back. Thank you. Um, any other new, new business to update on the Heights? Uh, oh, yes, in the Heights, Heights Business District, we have, um, we have uh, at least, uh, excuse me, we have uh, uh, reserved the Pure School for a uh, uh, potential public meeting on October the 29th um, related to the Heights rezoning. Um, and we will be sending out, uh, that, that will be getting uh, press uh, as soon as possible. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Kim, any new business? Shana? No. Gene? Um, a while ago, we talked about having 882 Mass Ave come back in because they still haven't fixed the um, vents on the front of the building. They still haven't given us a lighting plan, which was required. And there are probably some other issues. I'm just wondering where we are with that building. So it's my understanding, and Sarah's been working really closely with um, their representative, that the vent covers have been at least selected and that they're in the process of getting to um, changing them out um, for something flatter that this board had talked about. Um, in terms of the lighting plan, I don't believe you've ever seen the lighting So we've been working through the town manager's office on their lighting plan um, because there have been some issues. They really only have one light in the back right now, so it's not a full lighting plan. Um, but I can, I can certainly provide what they have at, um, what they provided for the building department. Um, and after, there's going to be some changes to the lighting, and then we'll get a fully updated plan for you. And, you know, we got an email about the lack of transparency in the front window. Um, and I think the rule is that if they don't meet the transparency requirements, we have to provide some relief from that. And they haven't come back for that either. So and I think that to me is part of what we started to address at the select board meeting about um, making sure that new businesses in town comply with the signage bylaws and I would say that the transparency certainly is part of, of that because that is window film which is obstructing the view into um, into these commercial spaces and if you know we have provided relief where it is warranted before right. for example right. um, some of the cannabis retailers who are you know there are specific restrictions on their businesses and, um, and we did it for a daycare. For daycare, right. right. So there are certain business types, but those do need to come in front of the So window the, film with the board. additional. If they need, re if they need relief yep. from, again, the 25% coverage and the number, because those do count as signs. Okay. Even if they are not advertising, um, they are obstructing the, the, the windows. And so, you know, that, that transparency percentage is what it is for a reason. Um, and they would need to come in front of us. Okay. Anything else, Gene? No. Um, Steve? Nothing here. Okay. Um, so at this time, I think again, um, we've, we've typically in the past where we have advertised a public hearing, do need to um, wait until that time to open it. So we'll need to take a 15 minute break. I apologize, I know that you're here waiting waiting to start, but um, we do need to make sure that if anyone um, is coming specifically for that hearing, that we started at the advertised time. So um, we will take a quick break and return again at 8.30. Thank you. Thank you for your understanding. I'd like to um, recall the meeting to order after our break. Uh, we'll move.
now to agenda item number five, which is the public hearing for docket number 37180 Broadway. So this is a uh, response to a request to reopen the special permit um, by the uh, original applicant. And I will turn it over to uh, Claire for an introduction. Thank you. Um, so this is a request by 80 Broadway LLC to reopen special permit docket 3717 for the construction of a new building containing retail and commercial office space and nine residential units at 80 Broadway in the B4 uh, district. Um, the applicant proposes to change the proposed common area outdoor deck space on the fifth floor to private outdoor space for the fifth floor unit. The applicant proposes to establish common area outdoor deck space on the second floor for the remainder of the residential units. The applicant further proposes to identify a second affordable unit in the project to be deed restricted and added to the subsidized housing inventory of the town. Thus, the project will add nine residential apartment units, of which two will be affordable to eligible households, making up to 70% of the area median income in two commercial spaces. I would like to remind the board that last fall um, at our town meeting, we um, uh, removed the requirement for usable open space and mixed use uh, projects. Um, possibly because of, of um, the work that we did on, on this project. I'm not sure. Um, but this permit is reopened because it's based on the decision made by the board at the time, um, under the zoning bylaw at the time. And so therefore, we thought we should bring it to the board for discussion. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I will uh, now turn it over to uh, the applicant. Okay. Please introduce yourself for the record. and. You know, any words you'd like to say about uh, the uh, request to reopen would be great. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Chair, Madam Chair, uh, and Director Ricker, and the members of the board. So, my name is Robert Costello. I live at 137 Franklin Street here in Arlington. Um, I, am, I am the principal member of Beauty Broadway LLC. We've been moving this project along, as you know, rather swiftly, I would, I would say. Uh, it was about a year ago that we were approved, as I recall. Um, it's gone, it's gone well over there in the corner of Winter Street. As far as I know, the town may say different, but I don't think, at least on the ground or through the town, we've received one single complaint from a neighbor of, of anything regarding the project that's going on. It's a lot of dancing in the corner. It's, it's a small lot, as you know. Um, and so this came about, you're going, many of you are even more experienced than I am with building buildings, but you're going up. And we got up to the top floor and we're looking at the design, Paul, Connell couldn't be here tonight and I, and the layout uh, was surprising to us, let's put it to you that way. It was about 900 square feet, it was tight because of the egress requirements and getting off the elevator, there was about 500 square feet that was dedicated to open space for uh, emergency situations other than the elevator. And it seemed like the top floor was an afterthought, frankly, once we were, once we were up there. Um, I believe I said in the first of the two hearings that we had that our intention, because of the cost of the project of this sort, was to sell the top floor, keep all the other units, and um, rent them out. And then we would pay down the debt to get the, what many of you probably already know, but for the public, the debt service coverage ratio to a reasonable rate where we might actually be able to put a few dollars in our pocket each month or satisfy the bank without actually outlaying even more money. So all that being said, we were up there and we were looking at the square footage and said, well, there's a whole hallway here where you have to come off the back of the building to then access the stairs, which could be utilized for the top unit. And there were a bunch of other uh, stipulations that I could go into about it as far as the flow of it, but it was terrible. To be, and, no criticism of the architect, but it just wasn't working. So we sat on it for a few weeks and kind of thought about it. And then we said, well, if we took the common space on the set top of the bottom of the second floor, which was to be, uh, yeah, right there. Right here. Yes, this is two. So, this space was to step out of B for the exclusive use of this one unit. And this was to be for this commercial space. This comes to about uh, 593 square feet. And the top
top floor was about 507. So our proposal after meeting with Sarah Suarez, Claire Ricker was to say, could, could we try to come up with a solution? And they said, well, this is something for the board to consider. So um, our proposal is to swap those two. So, and, and then also with the understanding that uh, there's, I don't, I don't take it lightly that we're coming back to the board to look for a change. We discussed the opportunity um, for providing another affordable unit of, a, of one bedroom. So that's that's where we're at tonight. Okay, great. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. I appreciate that. <coughs> and um, it's great to see this project going up. I always enjoy seeing it when I come up Broadway and see the great progress you're oh, making. Well, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve. Any thoughts? Uh, yeah, so the of the nine residential dwellings, so the the fifth floor will would be would become a condo, or but that was the plan for it to, to become a condo. So leaving eight, and of those eight, currently one is uh, one is affordable, and you're <laughs> proposing a second. How much will that raise the rents of the market rate, the six market rate units? How much will it raise the rent? Of yeah, the other ones? I mean, you've got to, you've got to, the money, the, the operating cost has to come from, you know, the cross subsidization is that the market rates pay, pay the difference that the affordable unit doesn't. So, well, it's, it's I don't think it'll raise, in all honesty, I don't think it'll raise the rates of those units at all. The market will dictate what we get for the, the, the other units. And so, um, we were going to apply for the grant program for the, the new unit. Uh, okay. Um, but, other than that, there's, it's it's out of square footage up top, possibly, mm -hmm. if we sell it. We may have to, have to rent it, depending on where the numbers come out. But, um, I mean, we're, we're looking for, you know, we weren't going to adjust the rents. We can't artificially push them up on the other units mm -hmm. because we need. So, uh, in our pro forma, they are what they are. I don't, I don't remember exactly what they were for the okay. market rate units. Right, that's the only question I had. Great, thank you. Gene. Yeah, thank you. And, and I like this idea. I do have a few questions, though. One is, I just want to be clear, the first floor will not be changed at all. It will be exactly not at all. the same as approved. You know, what I did is I did a little chart for myself. What were the proposed sizes of the units mm -hmm. and what are the, apparently the actual sizes of the units? And there are some differences. There are, there, there are, yes. Yeah, not not a lot, but you know, they they are there. Most of the units are a little bit different square footage than they were what we approved. Why why is that? Well, I'll tell you. In the B units, it was a straight up mistake by the architect. Uh -huh. When they were built, we went in just with the laser, not with the architect doing it. Mm -hmm. And we said these are these are not seven hundred. 65 or whatever. 785. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, and then, so that was, yeah. and we asked David, who was our architect, and he said, yeah. it's, it's a mistake. I made an error. So those are smaller. Those definitely right. are smaller. Right. Um, the A units are a little bit, we, we think they're about 704 square feet once the as built is completed. Those ones were 698. I could, I mean, I could. Yeah, what what you had for the A unit, second floor six ninety nine, yeah, third floor seven oh eight, fourth floor seven oh eight. So that was what was previously approved. Yes. So what was six ninety nine is now um, six ninety six. Not too much. Third floor, which was seven oh eight, is now six ninety six, and the fourth floor, which was seven oh eight is now 696. Yeah. So they went down about a dozen square feet. Yeah, those are actually going to be seven, seven they have to be 700 square feet if we're going to, we, we have, the affordables have to be seven. This is where I was going, Yes. right? Yeah. You have to have, you have to find two units that are at least 700 square feet and at least in the proposal you gave to us, the only three residential units that are at least 700 square feet mm -hmm. are 3B at 785, 3C at 860, and 4C at 819. Now, you know, there are a number of other units 
that are like four square feet short yeah. of 700 square feet. So my question is, can they can be? You can. You're gonna no, fix that. They're gonna be 700. All right. Square feet. All right. All right. <laughs> I talk, Paul and Breezy's not here. He's, he's abroad in Ireland. Yeah. We've gone over this a few times, and okay. I called him tonight to say okay. those are gonna be 700 square feet. He said, I assure you, they'll be. The, the unit A, and just to point out, I think 4A was 709. So that was, is that the one you were referring to? 4A was, was 708, yeah, that, right? That's, and now it's 696, for example. Well, on that, yeah. And when the, when the as built, and, it, and I mean, they have to be. So we're going to make the unit be 700. So plus. how are you going to do that? Uh, if it's 696. I'm well, just curious. I, I would I would defer to David okay. on that, the architect and Paul. But I think there's a little bit of room in a couple spots on the on the in the hallway that we might be able to pull it out a little bit. And, it, and I I would I know Paul has measured those, and they are so over 700 now on his measurements with the drywall. Yeah. So, so I think I mean we'll discuss this as a board. I think it would be helpful to get with the actual measurements are going to be of at least the units that the two affordable okay. units. Um, so you're moving, what, what I didn't see in, in the materials earlier, and I may have missed it, now that the second floor, what's the railing going to look like? Because there has to be a railing on the deck, and I haven't seen that anywhere. Yeah, I was out there yesterday, and I yeah. have, it's, there's a couple feet, but it's not yet to code. There will be, what I... What's it going to look like? Yeah, I think it's in the initial drawings. Is it? Yeah, I think we did. I, I wasn't prepared off the top of my head. I think that we uh, talked yeah, a little bit about that in the original but, but we decision. Don't, oh, yeah. But we don't see it. No, you can see it there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's tough it's, to see, but it's you can. All right, it is, that is what it's yeah, going to look like. Yeah, I don't know if Claire is able to okay. zoom in or not. On that. Point, it's, but it is, it is right yeah. it's, it's a light gray there. Okay. There's three or four. Oh, I see. Sorry, there. I didn't see those before. And this is actually a couple feet up. Uh -huh. This, yeah, this, the top. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see that on yeah. this computer screen. <laughs> it wasn't showing. <laughs> Thanks. And, and my last question is, are all the parking spaces the same as the ones we approved? Yeah, none of them are changing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Sheena? <coughs> um, Jean actually covered many of my questions. Uh, um, just want to confirm, essentially none of the exterior aesthetic is, is changing. Is that correct? I'm going to say, it, let me just think about it for a second, but um, no, none of it's changing. <clears throat> Great. And the uh, the second floor exterior space, that's no longer, there is no longer any space dedicated solely to commercial space, exterior space? That's correct. It's yep. it's now shared by residential and commercial? Yeah, I, it is. Our, our expectation is that it could be shared. Mm -hmm. um, I know Director Rigger, just at the beginning, I was going to jump in that point, Craig said it would be for residential, but what it is, it's taking the exclusive space to that first residential unit on the Broadway side, dropping that from that space, and then including what was to be the commercial uh, into the whole piece. If, if I could interrupt, it looked to me like there were two ways onto the second floor roof deck. Yes. One is from that hallway Correct. that you've built yep. that used to be part of the commercial space. Yep. And second is from the commercial space itself. Uh, one's, no, one's from the no. hallway, you had that right, and the other one's from the residential unit, which I had said, now that to... Uh, so it looked like the residential unit would continue to have its own space on the second floor? No, it, would, it would continue to have a door there, and door. now that to uh, uh -huh. uh, member Corman Houston's uh, question, that's the one change that I could see happening where if, that, if I said to so Paul, I said, I could see a scenario where somebody doesn't want, whether it's locked or not, doesn't want a door from a common space to there, mm -hmm. so we would make that a window uh, mm -hmm. from the residential space. To okay, clarify. so there would just be that hallway entrance to the second floor roof? Uh, yes, yes. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, I appreciate that. And 
<coughs> can you actually, uh, Sarah, I think is driving, can you zoom in a little bit um, on this? On this one? Claire, yeah, Claire's driving. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, so, so the question of the door actually raises an interesting question, which is it looks like um, there are going to be a fair number of windows in that residential unit now looking out over what is uh, what's now common space. Is that is that correct? There, there are windows there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, do you foresee any privacy or security concerns? Do you have anything to manage that? Less so security, but being because we're going to be the building's going to have cameras everywhere. We're going to yeah. be around, I'll be where the tenants are, not necessarily the guests are, but um, I could see a scenario where it, that somebody, just like any of the other windows, might want to put a reverse uh, or even some sort of, I heard you come up earlier about some sort of tinting. Um, we're not going to necessarily put that up, but if they wanted that, I would think that would be a reasonable request. Okay. Um, great. And was very pleased to see the addition of the second affordable unit. Um, uh, you know, as sounds like you've got a good plan to hit that 700 square feet, as long as as long as you choose comparable units uh, to the rest of the building, I think you've got a great path there. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Shayla. Uh, okay. Yeah, I love a little bit more on that. Uh, the lighting wall. The, the fence or wall here between the um, public roof deck and the private roof deck. There's a, there's a wall there, right? That won't be there. Yes. There was. There, he's proposing to remove it. Uh, one of the so shows it that way. Set of doors up and up, up, up 
there on the roof so, so it feeds a little small vesicle so in case there is uh, smells and noise you can shut it off. This okay. is just from the hallways you're saying because it's not into any units except it would be in this case on the top floor. Yeah. So it would be reverse as well. Yeah, I mean, if you, I don't want to get into this meeting here, okay? I, I really don't, but I'm just saying you should look into a top yard about yeah. it, okay? Yeah, uh, thank you. I'm just, from experience, I'm just giving some friendly advice. Uh, I, I like the project, uh, I've seen it go up, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's a fair compromise what you want to do by adding another affordable unit. Mm -hmm. I'm fully supportive of that, and uh, I'm okay. Thank you. Uh, Go back to the second floor. I know the common area. My my question is: Would you prefer to still have that as a dedicated roof area for that unit? Would that make for a better experience for the person living in it? It would definitely make a better experience yeah. for the person living in it. If I could Do you think you need that space for the other? units as well or do you think that that smaller space would be adequate for the other units my gut says that the tenants are going to use the space almost not at all that was part of the issue with up top and mm -hmm. we we're having trouble moving things around i i would be comfortable with with it being just as it's shown there with the common space being the reduced one in addition i was rereading the code a transition right as we were applying but it was my understanding is that in 2023 the board had discretion on the usable space and then what was voted in by the town is that we don't need what it looks like in the current code is that we don't need to have any usable open space now I, there's That's experts why I'm asking on you the question yes. as to what you would prefer I would prefer it to show like that okay. on the math it seemed fair even even swap, but I would like it to show. Up. I think if we're doing an affordable unit on top of it, mm -hmm. we're being it's a twenty to thirty year I restriction agree. on the deed. I would might and like, that's why I'm asking because I, yeah. I think it is better for the experience of the person living in that unit for that to remain. And I'm going to propose this to the board that I, I think it. If that's what you would prefer, I would have no issue with that section mm -hmm. of the roof deck remaining as a private deck and the public space being the area that you are showing on this plan. And I, um, I think, again, given the transition and the requirements and the fact that you are providing the second unit, we would put in the caveat that we would provide that the two affordable units meet the minimum square footage requirements set by the state yeah. requirements. Um, my feeling is that I, I think that having any roof deck space, including that size roof deck space, mm -hmm. is an amenity That's for nice. the building. Yeah. And I would not, if, if, again, thinking about the tenant use, they would most likely not feel as, just like the person in that unit wouldn't feel mm -hmm. as comfortable. I can't imagine somebody else feeling as comfortable, you know, with a, with a unit yeah, right, it, right there. It's a fair point, and I, my preference would be to keep the windows the way they are in that section. Um, I think, and I don't remember, it's going to way, ways back, but the initial discussions with David, our architect, is that it would be nice if the commercial spaces were combined and there was some sort of outdoor space up there, a home run, it's like a cafe type right. thing. I'll tell you, we've been advertising it and, uh, through other, not necessarily the town, but other channels. And um, we haven't had any interest for that, um, but, and we've had interest for a liquor store, which we've brushed mm -hmm. aside, which we don't want. And it being somebody who lives close to the neighborhood, I won't say in the neighborhood. And so, this seemed to be enough enough common space that it, it met uh, our aims to give people a spot to sit outside, particularly the commercial space. Probably won't be used at, at night all that much, and that's when people tend to use it on the weekends. But I'd be, I'd be supportive of it. Okay. It's a good idea. So I wanted to see what yeah. the other board members, I, again, I'm speaking for myself, not on behalf of the board, wanted to get my colleagues no I, I I think your your point about the privacy uh, is well taken and I'm I I'm fine with that 
Yeah, I was going to go there too because I thought that that space was continued to be exclusively for that one unit because that's where it showed. So yeah, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. I am as well. Okay. So I guess I have to, to close the circle on that. You know, this was drawn up, I believe, with Paul and, and I had some input, but and David. And so the idea would be to leave that alone, but then indeed demonstrate that the units are 700 plus square feet. And we know that the as built is going to, it always changes a little. Again, we, we would yeah. that, um, we would put in the stipulation that they be that they meet the state minimums is, is what we would yeah. report. for. Thank you. And then I think that, um, you know, that is something you review together with Department of Planning and Community Development and the building and inspector, you know, as part of your final CFO. Mm -hmm. So that's, that would be, again, what I would suggest to the board um, that we would put in as a, as a stipulation. Yeah. You talk to David when we started with the outside floor, not the inside floor. Okay. It would just make it not a trash collecting spot in that corner. Yeah, yeah. He'll know better. You, you, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, any other questions for the uh, applicant before I open uh, open this for public comment? Okay. Um, if anyone joining us this evening wishes to comment on this hearing, I'd like to open it for public comment. Okay. We'll close public comment oh, for Docket 3717. Um, yes. Any other, any other uh, comments, questions? Okay. Is there a motion to approve the modifications to Docket 3717 80 Broadway, provided that the two affordable units meet the minimum square footage requirements uh, set by the state? motion. Second. Great. We'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And a yes as well. Thank you all. Thank you very much. I appreciate really appreciate your time. it. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. We're looking forward to seeing the project. Uh, I am as well. That's <laughs> yeah, been making a lot of progress. Uh, what's that? The wine store that used to be there. Is that going back in? It is not going back in. Okay. Yeah. Monogamy. Yes. Yeah. It was a nice wine store. Yeah. Nice tasting. Nice people. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks really you appreciate it. Thanks for your time. It. So that closes the public hearing for docket number 3717, 80 Broadway. And the last agenda item we have this evening is no, open source. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no. So if anyone. Okay. Oh, we got you. Public member has left. So I'm going to close the open forum and uh, given that we have gone through our other agenda items, see if there is a motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. Take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Shana. Yes. Ken. Yes. And the yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. 